Hi folks, welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Hi folks, welcome back. I'm going to try something a little different. I think what was going on in the country lately, I live in upstate New York, New York State, unfortunately, and things are pretty bad. It's tough. It's tough here upstate even before COVID, even worse after. And I want to talk about, the series is going to be called, What Are We Doing? What Are We Doing? We are allowing... Government, local, state, and federal to basically destroy our economy and destroy our lives. Now, do I think that everybody in government is evil and is out to kill us? No, of course not. That'd be stupid. But I think many see this country as evil, rotten of the core, founded on racism and all the other stuff they talk about that somehow we haven't evolved from that into the most open, freest, richest, most sympathetic, most giving country that ever existed on the earth. And I think we've allowed them to get away with this. And we can't anymore. And for a long time, I thought about what I'm going to do. I'm 64. I'll be 65 this November. What am I going to do? I grew up here in Binghamton, New York, upstates in Broome County. I used to be a, a local elected official, a council member. It's a city about 45,000. There was nine of us at the time. And I was a Democrat back then. I consider myself a John Kennedy Democrat for you. Wondering what kind of Democrat I was. I left the party in 2013. I was on city council from 2000 to 2007. In 2006, that was the council president. Now, I've had a business here in kind of a low-income area. It's, it's a tough area socially and economically around here for 23 years. I've just recently sold it. In fact, this week, I'm boxing up. And putting away 23 years worth of memories. It's tough, and there's a lot of it, too. I'm a little old to be moving this stuff. I got a couple of my friends helping me. But it's made me think a lot. I've, I've been just running like a hamster on a treadmill for 23 years while I let governments, like in the state of New York, just slowly bleed us to death financially and our freedoms as well. So what I did was, I've been really, really searching for, what am I going to do with myself? You know, my mother's still here. My dad's passed away. I have one brother here. And I've had this business here for a long time. And I watch a lot of channels on YouTube, like a lot of you do. And I stumbled across, and I did a story on Matt already and his family called Hogue Vlogs. Welcome to Tennessee. He's a Southern California transplant, and he is vlogging his experiences coming to Tennessee. He lives in eastern Tennessee by the close to the North Carolina border in the mountains, close to the mountains. Tennessee and North Carolina run right across. North Carolina is east, and the mountains basically cut the border. I used to live in northern, northwest North Carolina in the summertime when I was a kid, my uncle taught at Appalachian State. It's beautiful there. I have a chance to go to almost central Tennessee at Crossville. A close friend of mine lives there. I can move there tomorrow if I want to. So I'm going to talk about the next two or three episodes. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. As long as I talk, I guess. I'm going to talk about how people like myself that have struggled financially for decades and this this has nothing to do with covid covid was just the 
the final death blow, so to speak. And it wasn't just the virus itself. These things happen in life. You can go through the last 30, 40 years. It's always something virus-wise or health-wise. But the way it was handled, the draconian lockdowns, the taking away of our freedoms. Can't go into detail, but how the November election was handled. Whether you like who won or hated who won or could care less either way, I think the whole thing was a gigantic cluster blank. And some states, as we found out, we all knew it kind of, but now it really shows some states are a lot freer than others. And I thought about my father's parents. They're what they used to call off-the-boat Italians. They came to this country with basically nothing. They were young, as millions of others did. I mean, basically a big bag, maybe a couple of uh, pieces of jewelry that were worth a couple of bucks. And they got off at Ellis Island, and they're on their own. And it was tough because life is really hard. It was really hard for them. But they had the guts to do it, to leave where they grew up in their country, come to another country that didn't even speak the same language, let alone another state. And they came by the millions. And I've been thinking about that a lot. And I was thinking about that as I was negotiating the final sale of my business. I ran across Matt Hoag's Hoag Vlogs and his channel. And that made me really think hard. I had a chance to go to Tennessee, but my, like I said, my mother's still here. But this episode that he did, he walked around a park waiting for his daughter to play soccer, and he just let it out. And I've talked about this episode before. I'm going to put the link in the description to this episode. Matt is just a regular guy trying to find his way trying to find what's best for his family and himself. Try to live a fuller life, a freer life. I mean, look at this picture here. President Trump, please liberate Hong Kong. This is Hong Kong, folks. Waving American flags. Singing our national anthem in Hong Kong. We let those people down. If COVID came, look at, look at the millions of people in the marches and COVID came and wiped it out. Matt talks about how he lives in the state of Tennessee, as you see here. This is their flag. It's kind of cool, actually. A lot cooler than New York's. It's got a scale, and I don't even remember. It's the Lady Justice with a blindfold, which is really amusing. But anyway, he talked about how did we get here? Who's telling the truth? Who's lying? Who's in charge? And what are they doing and why? And why are people's rights being taken away so, so quickly and, and given so easily? And he talks about that. And like I said, he's just a regular guy. He's no public order. But... I thought a lot about doing this two or three part series on what the hell are we doing? What are we doing? Why are we allowing this to happen? And I think it's going, I'm going to give you my personal thoughts on everything. And I hope you get some value out of it. I think we're going to start with um, mainstream media. Let's start with them. And you can see there, there's a picture of me. It's kind of a little store. I don't have a store anymore. I'm just cleaning it out now, but always open. When I say fighting progressives one at a time, I mean verbally, of course, with ideas, with the founding principles, that the back crap crazy stuff they want to do. And first I want to touch on mainstream media. Let's talk about that. The mainstream media is dying. There are dinosaurs on the planet, and the asteroid is coming. But this time, unlike the real dinosaurs, 
the mainstream media sees the asteroid coming. And it knows its days are numbered. And like a giant, powerful animal that's wounded badly, it's lashing out. I mean, you had Chris Cuomo the other day said, maybe some more white, white kids need to die before there's police reform. These people are out of effing control. Look at CNN. Look at the exposure that Project Veritas with undercover audio and video has done. We all knew that they were dirty. We all knew that they were trash. We knew all of that. Excuse me? But the fact of the matter is, we never really saw him say it so blatantly out loud. And with pride, I might add. It's ridiculous and it's wrong. The internet is a wonderful thing. And like all, wonder, all great things, there's both good and bad because people are involved. You can get guys like Tim Pool. They have three channels with over a million each, reaching millions of views and hundreds of thousands of people. Look at me here, just a, a guy with absolutely no technical skill at all. I mean, this isn't the clearest video in the world. I'm going to get some better equipment as time goes on, once I learn. But I can communicate and give thoughts of what I think to the potentially hundreds of thousands of millions of people. Now my channel is really small. But anybody can listen to this and anybody can watch it. And that's never been done before. And that was the beginning of the end for the mainstream media. But what they did to push along their demise was just start being reality television, lying. Just, you know, there's stretching the truth and bias. These guys lie. The one undercover video for Project Veritas said they saw Trump's hand shaking and they made up all this health problems with him. It was all lies and they knew it. He actually called it propaganda. He actually said it wasn't for CNN. Trump might have won the election. It doesn't matter if you like Trump or not. It doesn't matter either way. This is wrong and evil. When political parties merge with media, it ends up being a third world country. That's what dictators do. I digress a little. Let me go back to the mainstream media. Instead of adapting, now I will say, I watch a lot of Fox, but they're adapting a little bit. They have their Fox Nation, they have their other channels they watch, and that's great. Uh, Dan Bongino has one, I think uh, Judge Janine and all the pundits on there, and they all have their own side channels and their shows. It isn't the Walter Cronkite, Walt Brinkley Hour in the old days. BD has changed. It looks like they're changing a little bit. I wish they would change a little faster, but they're getting there. But the wave of the future, of not just media, is how people get their information. People under 30 have no clue what any of these cable news networks are. They don't have any idea at all. 40% of the people under 30 years old get most of their news from Twitter. That's crazy, but it can be used to get out the message. The message that they've been receiving is lies and ridiculousness and just trashing this great country. If you vote for somebody, you're a racist. If you do this, you're, you're homophobic. If you do this, you're xenophobic. If you do this, and it got nasty, and we started labeling people. Anybody that votes for Donald Trump is a racist? Really? Really, I think anybody that voted for Biden is, is, is several, one of several things. Maybe didn't have enough information to make an informed choice, but I didn't call him stupid. I didn't call him racist. I didn't call him homophobes. I didn't call them names, even though I have been pissed at him in a couple episodes. For the most part, I think most people that voted for Biden are decent people. They just didn't know what to do. They wanted to go back to normal. And Uncle Joe was, he was like Uncle Joe on Petticoat Junction for your older guys. He doesn't really do much, but he's harmless. Well, we found out that's not true. 
we found out what happened. And it's only been, it's been less than 100 days. We're at a crisis. And the media is feeding it, but in a good sense, in a good way at the same time, they're making their own demise come quicker. And I couldn't be happier. Now, maybe not guys like me because I'm in the game so late. I wanted to do this years ago, and I should have. I'd probably have a decent-sized channel now and do this full-time. But let her late, late than never. But I want to go on the first part of the media. It takes time to investigate candidates. It takes time to investigate issues. It takes time to investigate, does the vaccine work? And if it does, then why are people that are getting the vaccine still have to wear masks and stay away from people that didn't? There's so much confusion and, and just craziness, like the poor queen. Her husband of 73 years died. She had to sit by herself. Almost all the royal families either had a vaccine or has had COVID. And she probably was told, Your Majesty, this will help save lives. So, of course, being a public servant that she is, she said, yeah, I'll do it. And there she sits. And I did a video it's coming up with that poor woman sitting there in a church by herself. It's crazy. In the media... And these progressives that want to control your lives, to tell you how to live, to tell you how to raise your kids, to tell you about what to watch, who to vote for, what car to drive even, if at all, what stores to go to, what stores are, are being boycotted because they have a black gentleman that used to be a chef on their box of Uncle Ben's. Don't buy Aunt Jemima because there's a black woman on there. Just the stupidity and craziness. And they have the power now and the money. We just had a recent Black Lives Matter co-founder by over, was it, $3.4 million worth of properties? And she's looking at one in the Caribbean? We're being kind, folks. Not guys like me. We saw through it immediately, but a lot of you are. Because you're decent people. And you don't like racism, you don't like unfairness. So they tapped into the decency of the American people to trick them into doing the right thing. Well, it wasn't the right thing. Look at the rioting that's going on now. We have people that stood outside the Capitol building on January 6th during the insurrection. It was a bunch of asshats that acted stupid and they should be in jail. It caused the damage. People just standing outside taking pictures are spending weeks in jail. It's out of control. But here's the thing. Here's the thing the mainstream media doesn't have. Even the CIA, the FBI, everybody. We really and truly have the power and control. They just think they do. And as soon as you wake up to that, as soon as you wake up to that, you'll look at things way differently. You'll weigh 20 pounds lighter, at least you'll think you are. And you'll be freer. And then with a clear head, you can make choices on where to go in the United States or stay where you are and fight the good fight. Maybe you're in a really good spot where you are. God bless you. We're going to talk about that in the next few episodes. So I wanted to cover about Matt, and I'm going to put a link, and I want you to listen to his, I won't call it a rant, but I'll call it his little his little uh, airing, he had his, you know, he had a point. He had something to say, and he wanted to say it. And so, I think the world of Matt's a great guy. His family's really cool. His wife and his kids. I think I'm gonna go down to Tennessee. I'll probably see him in the next month, month and a half. So hopefully, I'll be on one of his uh, his vlogs. But we're gonna have a series now to talk about this, folks. When they swore in George Washington, the great experiment started. And the great experiment is still going on. And the great experiment can still fail unless we stick together. Until the next time, folks, goodbye and good luck.